Danny and welcome to another sapphic reading vlog. <laughs> so today is the day that I am leaving Japan. It's the morning of my flight and my apartment is totally empty. Well, not totally because I'm leaving some things for the next ALTs, but it's pretty empty. It's very weird. <laughs> And I am going to start off this vlog by starting Gideon the Ninth, <laughs> which I am very excited to read. I don't know whether I'll like it, but I downloaded the audiobook for the plane, so I'll update you later. home in New York and I have officially gotten my first dose of the vaccine just a couple days ago. Things have been really hectic but I'm officially on my way to being fully vaccinated so I'm very happy about that. Very relieved and I yeah I am back home and I finished Gideon the Ninth <laughs> and my one word to describe this book is bonkers just completely bonkers i i don't know what i was expecting it wasn't that this was a five star prediction for me unfortunately it was not five stars for me i can definitely see why some people are obsessed with this book and i have to say that the first portion of the book i was not a big fan at all like i actually considered DNFing it, but I was on the plane and I didn't have any other books, so I was kind of locked into that. So I just kept listening. And I know this is kind of late into the book, but 80%, at 80%, things just took a turn and I loved the last 20% of the book really, really so much. I absolutely loved Gideon and Harrow and their relationship. At the beginning, I just didn't understand why they hated each other so much and it was just kind of annoying because it just seemed like it was for no reason, but at the end, I really, really loved it and it was very emotional. <laughs> but just the things that didn't work for me was the weird tone of the book, like the setting versus the tone and the way the characters spoke. And like sometimes they mentioned things that were very modern, like modern conveniences. And other times it seemed like they were living in the past, even though it's a sci-fi novel. And the world building itself and the magic system just didn't seem... It wasn't well explained. And I am a very big fan of well-built worlds. And I mean, it's obvious that the author put a lot of thought into her world, but it just wasn't... It didn't come through on the page for me, at least in the way that I tend to like it. So unfortunately that was a little weird, but I really loved how it became kind of like a locked room mystery. I thought that was really creative and I do like Gideon a lot, even though the way she speaks is a little bit <laughs> not usually my style, but I thought that was really unique. I mean, I thought it was great and you know, a lot of action, lots of sword fighting lesbians, <laughs> let's be honest, it was good. I am hovering around a 3.5, not sure whether I'm gonna round up or down for Goodreads, probably up, because I did really enjoy the last part of it. Yeah, so 3.5 for getting the ninth, and now I'm going to start on a sunbeam, which is a very cute graphic novel illustrated and written by Tilly Walden, who also wrote the graphic novel memoir called Spinning, which I loved and I gave it five stars. So I am hoping that I love this one just as much. Let's go.
this is the finished product of my bookshelves right now. <laughs> As you can see, there are a ton of empty shelves, which I am very happy about. I have a lot of space to buy a lot more books. <laughs> so down here is my sci-fi fantasy section. Here I have nonfiction and like a couple of self-help and poetry books. And then here I have other fiction like YA contemporaries, historical fiction, and some short story novellas, just things that aren't fantasy. Down here, we have books in Japanese and haiku, some manga, and some TV show tie-in books over there. And then down here we have my Star Trek shelf with just Star Trek novels. So that's exciting. Empty, empty. And then my very small classics collection. I love this so much. My complete novels of Jane Austen. So that's done and I'm very excited. on a sunbeam by Tilly Walden and oh my gosh it was amazing the art was spectacular seriously just absolutely beautiful and the story was really cute I really really loved just every one of the characters they were adorable and I just I think Tilly Walden is a new favorite author of mine honestly like I loved spinning and I really loved this it was just absolutely adorable and really creative the basic synopsis I realized I didn't tell you is that there is this girl who joins a outer space construction crew and then she goes to find her old girlfriend from boarding school because they got separated and they weren't able to say goodbye so now she is crossing the universe <laughs> with with her little family and going to find her. There was also a non-binary character named Elle who I absolutely loved. They were so precious and adorable and I think they were my favorite character. They were just so good. I loved it. The representation in the story is really, really amazing. Very good. And it was just magical. Really, really magical. I absolutely loved it and I am so glad that I read it. Definitely a five-star read, hands down. Just amazing. <laughs> and now I am going to start reading The Stars and the Blackness Between Them because I was recommended this by Sarah from Novel Serendipity, who I will link down below, and she recommended reading the audiobook. So this book is about a girl from Trinidad, I believe, who is caught by her mother with her girlfriend, and her mother is very religious, so as punishment, she sends her daughter away to America in Minnesota, maybe? <laughs> some state that starts with M, I don't remember, but there, of course, she finds someone else who she has a connection with, and it is a sapphic love story, and I am very excited to start reading it, so I'll be back with an update really soon.
guys, so I am about 50% through with the audiobook for The Stars and the Blackness Between Them. I love it. This is gonna be a five-star book, I can already tell. This is really, really amazing. Like, I can't, I don't want to stop listening to it. It's so good. And I just got to a really sad point in the book, and I'm kind of really shocked. <laughs> And I'm just really hoping that it's a happy ending because I want a happy ending for these girls. I love Audrey so much and the narration of the audiobook is really, really good. So if you have the chance, definitely listen to it on audio. It's so good. So I am hoping to finish it really soon and I'll be back with an update. Hopefully it's a happy ending. here with my final update of this reading vlog. I just finished The Stars and the Blackness Between Them and I am so happy that I decided to pick this book up. It was just on a whim. I didn't know what book to read. I didn't really plan the three books that I was going to read for this vlog. So I just decided to pick this up on a friend's recommendation and it was a masterpiece. This book is an absolute masterpiece and I feel like it's quite underrated. I am actually using this book as the prompt for the summer sapphic readathon hosted by Elise for the book that matches your outfit and probably an underrated book as well because more people need to read this. This book has so many layers to it. It is so poetic and lyrical and just an absolutely stunning masterpiece of a novel. So the brief synopsis is that, I think I already told you, but let me just reiterate, this girl from Trinidad is caught by her mother with her girlfriend and her mother is very religious and doesn't approve, so she sends her to live with her American father in Minnesota. And while in Minnesota, she meets this girl named Mabel, who she develops a relationship with. And I absolutely love every single character in this book. I love them all. I love the parents. They're so realistic and so just such a great relationship between all of the parents and their children. I mean, not, not the Trinidadian mother, but it's realistic and it's definitely, I mean, it's it's reality that can happen, sadly. And it's very important to have all of these different experiences in YA novels like this. And I think this book was so powerful. I won't really give you much more of the synopsis, but I will say that it deals a lot with themes of death and sickness. So if that's something that will bother you, please Make sure you look up trigger and content warnings before you go to read this, but it is just handled so beautifully. Those themes, I really don't think it could have been done better, honestly. This book deserves every single award that it won. It did win some awards, but it deserves more because this book was absolutely amazing. It turned into my favorite book that I read this month. It was just stunning. I, I can't say enough good things about it. I did not expect it at all. And just, I loved every single layer of it. There's this character named Queenie, who is the grandmother of one of the girls, and she is just amazing. She is such a powerful character, an amazing woman. I love her. Like, I want her to be my grandmother. <laughs> she was so amazing. And just loved it. I loved the little snippets that we got to learn about the culture of Trinidad, the food, and everything surrounding that. I loved the commentary on being black in America and the prison system especially. That is a big theme in the book, but it's just handled so, so well and everything is so 
subtle, like it's not in your face at all. It is so good, so masterfully done. I will read anything that this author writes. It, it was amazing. And I really hope that this testimony convinces you to read it because gosh, you, you will love it. It is so, so good. It is mostly contemporary. There is a little bit of magical realism in there that just brings it right over the edge and just so good. It really just makes it pop and it's so perfect. And look at this cover. It's amazing and beautiful and oh, I love this. I did listen to it on audio. I believe I said that. And there are separate narrators for most of the characters and they all do an amazing job. The author herself narrates one of the girls. It's just beautiful. A beautiful performance by everyone involved and gosh, I am so happy that I read this book. Definitely a five star read for sure. I would give it 10 stars if I could. All right, everyone. So that is the end of the Sapphic Reading Vlog Volume 2. I am already thinking of books that I can read for Volume 3. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. I am always looking for sapphic book recommendations, so please let me know what you think I should read for the next volume of this reading vlog series down below. So if you liked this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me a lot, and I'll see you next time. Bye!